Hello, welcome back to RDLP. I'm your Prince of Play, Solon, and today we've got a brand new game for you. We've got a game called The Reject Demon Toko. I was not gonna let's play this game. I was like, I put this to the side like, let's not do this now. I don't have, I don't have a rhetorical way to approach this in our usual, very friendly, engaging style um, because of a lot of reasons and I wanna talk about them right now. So, this is a game that is, uh, first off, interactive fiction. We've done interactive fictions before, and uh, we have ways to approach that side of things, where it's like, oh, this is no video game. There is no game being played, but there is. There's a lot. We'll talk about that as we go through this. Um, Dysfunctional Systems. We played Dysfunctional Systems, and it was probably one of the best games that we played. It was one of my favorite games of, I believe that was 2014. Um, Mind-blowing, absolutely just stunning experience, and I hope that we can kind of recreate that here. Um, this game is not only interactive fiction, it is extremely gay. And not only just gay, but very, uh, very intimate. There is not just, like, relationships forming like our normal dating sims, but, like, a lot of intimate bonding is going to be happening, uh, over the course of this game. So I want to get that out of the way. I wasn't sure how I was going to approach the high levels of intimacy. Um, we'd been playing Hustle Cat. Hustle Cat is also very gay. Uh, it's a lot of things. It's very cute. It is not where the reject demon Toko is going to be. It's uh, going to be very much uh, maybe heavier in a lot of its themes. Um, Hustle Cat got to that point and it made it me like look back and be like, you know what? I think we can approach Toko, and I think we can meet it on its own levels in a lot of ways that would be very important. Uh, but I wasn't sure about how sexual things were going to get. And then we played Wolfenstein. <laughs> and that was surprisingly intimate. And we played right on through, we played it straight. Uh, its sexuality, of course, was very straight. Um, but I think that uh, it put me in a position where I was like, all right, let's put our let's put our hats on, let's put our thinking caps on, and let's dive into the Reject Demon Toko because this is going to be awesome. <laughs> I, I preface this with this whole speech because this is going to be good. This is a good story, and I'm just listening to this main menu music and like I'm seeing this bass guitar. And I'm like, okay, we've got a demon as our main character who plays bass. And there's like this ripping bass line going through the whole intro, and I'm like, I'm, I'm into this. There's a lot of symbology and imagery happening here. Open hands, something being wanted, uh, like some desire that wishes to be granted, um, is usually what open hands mean, and this looks like they're sifting into a pool, very, uh, very Christian image of putting your hands into the pool to drink. Um, but yeah, the bass guitar is actually what really gets me. Because the bass guitar is the, the symbol of the lone artist, right? The, the bassist, the person who wants to hold the, the, the bass of everything. The whole, like the bass, B-A-S-E. They want to hold the bass structures together, but from the background. Uh, and that's our main character. That's someone who's not usually a main character, is a bassist. And so I'm like, all right, we're going to get into some good stuff. All right, you guys ready? Everything that's inside, let's dive in the Reject Demon Toko. Toko is not that bright. Stop squinting and look ahead of you. She takes a few moments to adjust the light, and a bleary shape slowly comes into focus. Here you go, Toko. Here what goes, Daddy? Daddy! <laughs> I, I, yeah. Right... There. That is that All here. Right into the star belt. That star belt with the star nips is like... <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> this is like the extended cut of Hustle Cat, it feels like. Just right away is where I'm at, like, mentally right now. Oh, I love the horns. This is great. The tall demon, who is our dad, Sighs, running a hand through his hair before pulling on, putting on a big smile. 
This here's your first soul. She's gonna die soon. It's your job to do the reaping. But I don't want anyone to die, Daddy. Tough, tough nuts, Toko. This is gonna be uh, kind of your thing as a demon. Oh, so Toko's doing our first reaping. Look how gothic. Look how gothic they look. I love it. The demon's smile grows a little strained before he crouches to meet her, his daughter's eyes. There's nothing we can do, Toko. This girl's supposed to die. We have to be here to receive her soul. It's your job, and it's very important. But, but, it's the natural order of things for these humans to die. Like, humans are just up and dying all the time. I can't stop it, you can't stop it. Humans frickin' love to die. But if she dies without us being there for her, her soul will be lost to wander the earth forever, and that's pretty much worse. So, we're helping her. <laughs> it's... <laughs> just putting into context uh, our, the situations we get in real life this is what adults say all the time is they, they have to like manipulate kids into being like actually this is something that's good for you even though this is obviously not good because adults have to make compromises right adults make compromises all the time that's what being an adult means and so you have to then teach your own children what those compromises we make in life are and those kids are like but that doesn't make sense why would you compromise like you really don't have to and then you just have to be there and like it's the way it works we have to reap souls because humans keep on dying and if they don't uh so like this is a this is a good thing we're helping her he stands up straight again brushing off his knees toko remains unlightened unenlightened by his argument stand firm toko tell adults to shove off Though it may seem just a little bit hard for you now, by ferrying these souls, we actually do a lot of good for these humans. It's also what we require to survive. There's the rub. There's the rub. How come? Clay reaches out and pats her on the head. Like any kid, she often asks the hardest questions. <laughs> it's funny that the, the dude's name is Clay, uh, with the cute choker. And I just want- I wish it was just daddy. Just call him daddy the whole way. Just full, all in. Push all your chips in. <laughs> well, huh. as uh, you get older, I guess you'll realize it, Toko. Us demons don't eat what these humans do. As you grow, you'll depend more on helping these souls to hell. So you can become big and strong. That's good, right? Come on, kid. Come on, give me a break. We, we gotta do the demon thing. I like how they're explaining the, just straight up the, uh... What is that? Metaphysics. The metaphysics of the universe, right? He puffs up his chest, taking a small kind of victory of a father trying his very best, and turns Toko around, nudging her towards the girl in the distance. It's the only thing to do. Now go on. There's not much time. She's dying in there. <laughs> dying ain't much of a living. The tall demon leaves Toko to perform her task. She takes a determined breath and focuses ahead. A little human girl, oblivious to the dangers present, is wandering toward the busy street. She looks concerned, sniffling as she rubs her eyes, and she takes another step off the sidewalk and right into the street. Oh, they give you a whole character and everything just to off you. Hey, Toko grabs her hand and pulls the girl back. Psych! Eep! <laughs> goth girls! I hate it when goth girls pull me out of the street. I'm trying to die here. And dying ain't much of a living. The human girl turns around to look at the demon in surprise. Why are you crying? I lost my ball. Your ball? The girl sniffles again, nodding fervently. She squeezes Toko's hand. Ah, uh, my ball! I lost it somewhere. It's shiny and blue. Toko pauses, looking at the girl, then at the busy road. A truck zooms by a little too closely. They take a cautious step back. The human world sure is scary. Toko looks suddenly quite nervous before glancing down at the hand she's holding. She lets it go. The girl giggles. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I really like how they're framing this. This is uh, those kinds of experiences you have in your youth that makes you... Uh, ask questions about your identity in the future, this one being a demon holding the hand of a human girl. How is that possible? What does that say about Toka? What does that say about the girl? What? Human world. Uh, um, you're missing your ball, right? 
Toko quickly changes the subject while puffing up her chest and patting it with her hand. I'll help you look for it. If we look together, we'll find it really fast! Okay. That's cool. I, I like how we're starting our whole adventure framing uh, a very young experience that when Toko becomes older, as, as we all do as people, uh, when we become older, we look back on these experiences and like, oh, maybe that's the way that I turned out the way I am. <laughs> maybe I kind of liked holding that girl's hand when she went for the ball, and that was kind of a nice experience. Thank you for finding my ball. We just saved a girl's life today. The girl smiles, hugging it tightly to her chest. No problem, no problem. You're okay, right? The girl looks at the ball, then back up at Toko, humming. What? Your eyes are really funny! They're my dad's eyes. I'm just borrowing them. I think? She leans in, curious. Where are you from? Well, hmm, demon land. Ha, huh, demon land! Are you a demon? I always heard they were scary, but you're nice! Toko huffs, twiddling her fingers. Demons can be scary sometimes, but I'm, I'm really brave. I'm one of the brave demons. Toko pauses a bit and looks at her feet. Actually, Daddy says I'm supposed to find a soul, a human soul, or a soul of something. The girl's eyes grow wide with curiosity, and she shuffles in closer. A human soul? Well, Mommy says everyone has a soul, so I doubt it's going to be hard to find one. Uh, yeah, but, um, I don't think I can just easily get, like, a soul. So... Wouldn't you help me find my ball? Oh, I have an idea. She places her ball down, cautiously setting it between her feet as though it might try to roll away without her. Then she pulls out a scrap of paper and a bright red crayon. I'll give you mine. You can borrow it for a while if you want. <laughs> oh, children, making deals with their devils, <laughs> drawing up pacts and contracts and stuff. You can show your daddy this. It's definitely a soul. You just, you just you just put soul on a piece of paper. Yep, take it. That's my soul. It's a metaphor. It's what they call it in the big the big kindergarten schools. While she's sure this couldn't have been what Clay meant, Toko grabs the scrap. Uh the girl gives a proud nod, picking up her ball again. I don't mind giving it to you since you need it, right? It'll definitely work. Okay, Nadia. I believe that's actually our other main character, eh? Um, I don't know if that's how soul transfer works. Toko pauses. That girl, Nadia? She must be a goddess or something. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Nadia. I'm glad I could help you find your ball. But I have to go now. Daddy must be wondering why I'm taking so long. Ah, uh, I'd help you anytime. Nadia shuffles a little bit. And thank you, Toko. I should go home. You're a really great demon. The girl scampers off. Toko briefly looks down at the piece of paper and beams. <laughs> we did it! We got us a soul! We're the best at demon! Best soul demon person ever. Toko. Aha! It's a... Uh, hey, hey, Dad. What's up? Hey. You gonna ever, like... <laughs> keep your pants up? <laughs> no? Alright. You don't need the whole shirt. You just need the sleeves and a, and a cape drawn between the sleeves. You don't need any other... It's hot in hell. And, like, this is the fashion. God, he's just so accessorized. I'm, like, looking at this, like, two bracelets. Four rings. On both hands? Not to mention all the pasties and earrings and everything else, but not... But the horns are not decorated. No, no horn piercings or, or rings or... Nobody ever puts like a like a, a bracelet or anything around their horns. Well, I guess they sometimes do, but like that's a it's never like a demon horn thing to put things around your horns and decorate your horns. It seems like it would be a demon thing. Is all I'm saying. Oh dear, Clay, how did it go? How did it go? Toko holds up the piece of paper and beams. Got it. <laughs> Got a soul. Clay looks puzzled for a moment and tilts his head. Glancing at the human girl running up the street. Nothing happened to her. She gave you this instead and left. Toko folds the piece of paper and carefully puts it in her pocket. 
Maybe we need like a training video or something, Clay. Just an idea. <laughs> something to really show us how it's done. <laughs> Did I do something wrong? No, 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 of course. This is perfect. Clay begins to wave his hands frantically. You sure did your best out there. I'm proud of my little girl. But we, uh, we better get back home quickly. Ah, uh, boy, I think she's gonna kill me. As Clay walks back to the door of hell, Toko follows behind with her head still on Earth. Did she tell me her name? <gasps> what if she just knew? Ooh. Because Nadia never ever, like, introduced herself as Nadia. It just kind of popped up naturally. Oh, okay, this is... This is a cool start. We've got some, some space we can work with here. <laughs>